TV. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Trouble in a school in Dalton, Georgia. A teacher now under arrest. Several hours ago, police say 52-year-old Jesse Randall Davidson barricaded himself inside the classroom at Dalton High School. When the principal tried to get inside, a gunshot rang out. Students were evacuated. No one was injured. Right now, there's no word as to what started that incident. Meanwhile, students heading back to Stoneman Douglas High School the first time since the deadly Valentine's Day shootings. Many of them sharing support for fellow students and staff, others just trying to get through the day. Very intense, like no one really seems to know what to do or where to go. We're just honestly, everyone's just wandering the hallways, kind of looking lost. You really can't even no. imagine the emotions that the students and staff were feeling as they were walking into that building no, today. It had to just be, I mean, unbelievable mm -hmm. experience for them. Uh, Hannah Doba was there showing us how students are taking this important step forward. Welcome back, guys. Volunteers handed out flowers as students returned to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School for the first time since 17 classmates and teachers were killed two weeks ago. It's like nerve wracking, but at the same time, you kind of can't help but feel sad and happy because there's so many people here. Hundreds of law enforcement officers from across the state were on hand for security. It's just weird to go to school and just everywhere you look is a police officer or like a service dog and it's just uncomfortable. About 150 grief counselors were available if needed and the principal tweeted this photo of students with a therapy dog, one of 40 brought in. It was very like relaxing and helpful. Uh, I don't know, it was very like calm, I guess, pretty sad. Students were here for only half a day. The school district superintendent wants to use the week to ease the students back into a full schedule. We know things will never, ever be the same, uh, but we're going to try to make sure that we can figure out how to, to move forward. Melissa Bercoli picked up her two kids after school was let out. So it's been very difficult and extremely uh, sad for all of those uh, victims and their families who don't get to come today and uh, pick up their children. A former student is charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder for the shooting. His former classmates are seizing the moment to push state and federal lawmakers to tighten gun laws. And Adoba, CBS News, Parkland, Florida. Governor Rick Scott promising to pass a school safety bill before the state's legislative session ends next week. Since the Parkland shooting, state lawmakers discussing ways to make schools safer. Some of these suggestions, including a live video feed to police. Mm. That way they can trigger gates to shut down hallway access within a school. Another idea, classroom panic buttons. Superintendents, principals, teachers are experts at this, if you will. And they cannot tell you exactly what it means to harden a school. Now, we did ask Senate leadership if they were looking into swipe cards for the schools. They tell us that's up to each district. Another safety measure up for discussion, single entry ways in the schools. Lenitra Bennett joins us live. Now, Lenitra, how does the design of a school play a role uh, in school safety? Ben and Abby, I talked to an architect today who says it's very important. And one of the main things is having a single entryway, which is having one way in and one way out so that it makes it easier for administrators to control who's coming and going. David Benson says that a school, even if it isn't built with a single entry, it's still possible to achieve, like South Walton High School he's currently working on. He says the school has several entry points, but now his company is designing a new building that's being placed in front of that building, which will block the other buildings and allow one entrance. Vincent says schools should also have a lot of windows. The funny thing about windows when it comes down to uh, uh, school safety is, if you're across the way and you can see a bunch of windows, you, don't, you might not be able to see into the building to know if anybody's looking out at you, but you also don't know there may be somebody out there, so you don't know. So it, it stops you psychologically from wanting to do something now when you're in full view. 
Vincent says having a clear view in all school hallways is also important. Now, one of the things he said about doors is, unfortunately, sometimes kids may prop doors open. So, of course, that may cause a problem. And he says when it comes to those windows, try not to have a window right next to a door so that an intruder would be able to break the glass, reach in the window, and open the door. So that's some of the problems that they do run into when they are thinking about designing schools. We'll hear more from him and parents coming up at 6 o'clock. For now, guys, back to you. Hmm. Lanisha, yeah, interesting. thank you for that. Very interesting. Uh, so far since this newscast, a couple different mm -hmm. interesting ideas as far as improving school safety. In other news, a memorial now in front of the apartment where a child was killed during overnight fire. Balloons in honor of a young life, you see them there, taken too soon. That all happening just after midnight at the Rockbrook Garden Apartments on Idlewell Drive. That's where we find our Alex Crescenti. Alex, you've been out there all day today trying to talk to people. Uh, what do we know right now and what are people there saying? Well, Ben, Abby, all throughout the afternoon, there's been cleaning crews coming in and out of that apartment complex. There's some uh, windows that are boarded up there, and you can see where the door was broken in uh, to get in at access of that fire. Uh, but there's even a small memorial, like you said, set up for that child that pa passed away in the fire. Uh, we spoke to one neighbor who watched it, the fire, for about a half hour last night and says in the almost two decades that he has lived here, he has never seen anything like it before. Four. And we also spoke to one family member of those who lived in the building and said he tried to get into the uh, building to save everyone, but tragically was not enough. I heard a tapping on the door uh, lightly. I had, to, I had to kick the door in to get out and drag out. And I, I tried to go back in at the baby. And I, I tried to get on the ground, crowding, crawling on the ground, try to search for the baby. And I, I couldn't find her. And, um, couldn't find out the baby was upstairs and you know, I couldn't get to it. And while the flames may be out at this time and emergency personnel are all gone, uh, the memories of this fire will not be going away anytime soon. Many people saying that is something they'll never forget. And one man telling us that he saw EMS crews carrying out the child uh, from the building here last night. For now, reporting live in Tallahassee, Alex Crescenti, Ben, Abby. Back to you in the studio. Uh, Alex, uh, you know, tough story. Mm -hmm. A carjacker behind bars after leading deputies on a chase. It happened just after 7.30 this morning. The person stealing the car along Chairs Cross Road. Deputies spotting the stolen vehicle a short time later near Capitol Circle Northeast and East Gateway. Deputies eventually catching up to that person. However, uh, they got out of the car and then ran. The chase eventually ending on Thomasville and Benton Roads. A canine unit catching that person. New at 5, a renewed call to hire the next city attorney. One commissioner pushing tonight for current deputy city attorney Cassandra Jackson. Capital City, Mary, uh, Capital city correspondent, I should say, Mariel Carbone, live at City Hall where that discussion will happen. Mariel, uh, this not the first time that they have had this discussion. That's right. Just last month, uh, they were talking about potentially hiring her for this position, but it was voted down. And those commissioners that voted against hiring her, it was not because of her skills, but because of the fact that they wanted to look outside the city for a hire or just expand the search in general. They only interviewed three people for the position. But tonight, City Commissioner Scott Maddox saying that he will bring the vote back up again and will push to hire Cassandra Jackson. Now, Maddox was originally one of the commissioners that voted against hiring her and made the motion to reopen this search process, even adding more qualifications for that position. But he tells me tonight that he plans to call the vote to hire her, saying that she's the best fit for the job. When somebody works hard and they're within the ranks, uh, they shouldn't be penalized from being within the ranks. What we should do is have an open and fair process. And that's what we did here. She had to compete against people from the outside, and she rose to the top. So I'm proud to support her. Now, since the initial interviews happened back in January, there have been an outcrying of support for Cassandra Jackson, specifically from the faith-based community, which came and spoke at last month's commission meeting supporting her. Now, that decision, it still has not yet to happen. It should uh, get underway in a little bit. But remember, it only needs three votes to pass. Uh, Commissioner Curtis Richardson and Tallahassee Mayor Andrew Gillum have both already said they are supporting her. So this could uh, really move that vote in 3-2 favor of her.
rather than the opposite, which is what we've been seeing the last two months. So we'll keep you updated on that. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys reporting live from City Hall, Marielle Carbone, WCTV Eyewitness News. Okay, Marielle, thank you for that report. We look forward to those updates. It was another beautiful, yeah. <laughs> comfortable day outside. It, right. I mean, there are some clouds, but the temperatures, Mike, still incredible out there. We are still in the midst of this spring-like pattern, and it's tough to even be upset, although the pollen is just going crazy yes, that out is there. True. And, 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 and I'd venture to say we haven't quite seen pollen like this in February before. I'm sure we have, but in recent memory, we'll put it that way. But the temperature is just delightful. It's still above average, but very comfortable. Morning lows, mostly in the 50s, with just some 60s down toward the coast. But then the afternoon temperatures, a few spots flirted with 80, but most of the state in the mid 70s. Now tomorrow, we will see some rather rapid changes. Now we have a little tiny bit of rainfall today. A couple little showers from Liberty County and also up in the Seminole and Decatur counties. Again, they're not big ones, but they're little small showers and then moving on out toward the east. But that's all tied in with a system which is still well to our west. But we'll see the rapid changes tomorrow, including some warm and windy conditions and eventually this little line of showers coming right into the viewing area. We'll tell you how it all works out for our Friday and weekend forecast. Still looking fantastic in a few minutes. You know, uh, I finally have a, a green car, I guess. You know, I've never had a green colored car, <laughs> but this time of year. Oh, I know. <laughs> it changes, It's just right? awful. You know, that Paul and Mike, thank you. Still to come on Eyewitness News at 5, Mom on a Mission. In honor of World Rare Disease Day, we'll meet a family struggling to raise awareness about a condition even some doctors don't understand. But first, happening now, a live look inside the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol. This is the Reverend Billy Graham Lies in State. Tributes taking place all day long. We'll have much more on this story coming up at 530.